I am Alfonso McGriff III. I invited people here to come and, and talk about how to have what I call a harmonious and productive interaction. I call that conscious conversations. Um, at this point, I just want to pass the mic so everybody can introduce each other however they choose. And then after the introductions, we have it. And everybody's sitting here with the same basic understanding that um, I want to share something and you're not necessarily clear what it is I want to share until I actually <laughs> share it. So we all starting at the same place for the most part. So I'm going to pass the mic and you introduce yourselves however you choose. Peace, I'm Empress Ayana, the owner and founder of Onyx Restorative Justice, or ORJ. Thank you so much, Alfonso, for the invite to be a part of this. William Clark, uh, long-term resident of Hartford, short-term entrepreneur of Hartford. Nefresha Johnson, I am an educator from Georgia. Hello, everyone. Keisha Tindall. Hi, everybody. I'm Perry, Perry Drake, and I'm just here representing me. Hi, my name is Millie Brooks. I'm from New Jersey, and I'm also a teacher. I'm Theo Wilson, and I'm also here in support, and also I'm a seeker. Um, and this brother has deeply enriched my life, so I had to come. Drove all the way from Jersey. Hello, my name is Danielle McBride, and I am an avid learner. I love learning new things and gathering as much information as I can to help along my journey. Hello, I'm Val Samuel from Breakthrough Clinical Services, and I am here to learn more knowledge. Good evening, Marcia Whittingham. I'm just here as a longtime friend and associate, and um, I guess somewhat entrepreneurial here in Hartford also. Good evening. My name is Abdul Rahman Ibn Muhammad, and um, I'm just here to hear about Conscious Conversations. Well, thank, 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 thank you all for hanging out. What I would like to do first is just give you a brief understanding of how this all came about. Um, Back in 1998, I would say, I was heavily involved in, in, in poetry and sharing words and, and the arts in that way. But I was also extremely angry. <clears throat> I began introducing myself to our history and understanding how we came to be, or when I say we, I'm talking about African people in America. And as I continued to read, the more angry I got. And then I had wonderful instigators like Minister Louis Farrakhan and Brother Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. And I can name any number of other people who assisted me with my anger. And so I, um, I, I made my first journey to Africa, to West Africa, to Senegal. And I was so heated when I was there and saw that we didn't control anything. For three days, I didn't even talk. I became a mute <laughs> and people didn't understand. But uh, that's how just anger filled I was. I was so angry, I couldn't even speak. And um, when I came back home, uh, the anger continued. I, um, and, I, and I would study for the purpose of verbally removing somebody's head if they said something that I didn't think makes sense or that I didn't think was right. And if they couldn't verbally handle myself, my goal was to totally destroy them verbally now so we won't ever have that problem again. I was, I was on a real rampage. And uh, one day I was at a party. It was a, it was a party. Of, it was a lot of artists, poets and writers and actors and actresses and people in the arts. And so I was at a party. And it was a, a big conversation going on in the kitchen. And I walked in the kitchen. And of course, 
people like me, you know, you get a reputation. And so I walked in the kitchen and about two thirds of the people just saw me and just walked out. In the mid sentence, everything just started filing right out the kitchen as soon as I came in the kitchen. And my little feelings was hurt. <laughs> And, but it wasn't that hurt at the time. It was very impactful because my thought was I want to be heard too, but because of the energy and spirit that I had, there was one person who remained in the kitchen who was adamant about not being intimidated by me. So they were ready, you know. Sometimes when you hostile and aggressive the way I was, you come in and there are people who are just ready for you. And so he was ready and I got in a good loud argument with him. <laughs> <laughs> and but the the impact of those people filing out of the kitchen still lingered with me and so I began thinking that if I want to be heard I have to begin adjusting how I interact with people and so I started making these little adjustments and with some people even today that was 1998 how many years is this later now 1998 and then that 2008, 2000, 21 years later, there are people that still, like there's a saying that said, it's, 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 not, it's not what you said, it's how you made a person feel. And there are people to this day who still have a problem with me because of how I presented myself 21 years ago. And I understand that, I don't take it personal or hold it any kind of way. I just continue on my journey to, to grow and evolve. So um, as I started trying these different things and I started noticing how different things were working, I started taking note. And so long story short, I just pretty much finished a book. The name of the book is The Roots of a Tree. And um, because I believe at the foundation of everything successful, there must be a harmonious and productive interaction. And uh, and, and the subtitle is McGriff's Unique Approach to Harmonious and Productive Communication. So what I like to do is read the guidelines to you. Now, at the end of all of these work, these, um, these handouts, at the end is two blank pages. And, and everybody should have a pen. So if you have any thoughts about anything that I'm saying as I go through these guidelines so you won't forget them, please just jot them down and so you won't feel like you gotta interrupt me before you forget what you're gonna say. Just jot them, jot them down and, uh, and then we can address the questions after I finish going over the six guidelines. Is that cool? All right, so, um, and then after we finish the six guidelines and go over any questions that you might have, then we'll put a couple of thoughts on the table and deal with those. Are y'all with me? The other thing too, even though we're speaking into a mic, we still have to project so everybody at the table can hear what we're saying. Because he can just, if you're too loud or whatever, that's no problem, he can just turn it down and he can make the adjustment on the mic, but we still have to project at the table so we can all hear each other. Are y'all with me? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. A conscious conversation is an informed, reasoned, and progressive approach to having a harmonious and productive verbal interaction. This approach promotes skill enhancement in the areas of emotional intelligence, conflict resolution, and critical thinking. Such relationship building skills are essential for navigating and negotiating one's place in an increasingly global society where personal referrals and social media have become key components for long-term success. When participating in the conscious conversation, understanding is the ultimate goal. We ask questions and share information. We take responsibility for and control over our personal prejudices and emotions, which if left unchecked can disrupt a conscious conversation. Having a conscious conversation can be a challenge for those who have not experienced McGriff's unique approach to harmonious and productive communication. It's quite the deviation from the traditional approach to having a conversation. We discourage arguing and debating and encourage listening, observing, thinking, learning, sharing, and growing, which can potentially bring understanding. Every conversation has the potential to be a conscious conversation. So, 
the six basic guidelines 